I know it sounds so stupid, like, I've changed my life. Good morning, everybody. It is 7.35 in the morning, and I feel like I already encountered so many things this morning. The sun is just kind of slowly getting out. I'm still in my first coffee. The bed looks kind of messy, but it's not messy. It's just that I'm, I've been having a guest for the past two days. Stefan has been my best companion. What I wanted to do is I wanted to film a Q&A video addressing like a lot of like very popular questions that I've been getting lately and I thought like why not do it today because I don't know like you know the fashion one all the craziness constantly going around I have a lot of autumn styling videos planned for you and I just want to make sure that I have enough sit down and talk time with you guys so it's kind of like just sitting and chatting type of video my hair I've been like sporting my natural kind of style hair I might change that soon you know it depends but this is what it is at the moment and when it's down i feel a little bit like i don't even know how to say this does it swallow me a little bit i don't know you're gonna have to let me know what you think i have a lot of questions here and i'm just i haven't even read them i'm just gonna go straight into it your favorite restaurant in paris well um my probably favorite 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 for food would be pink mama or east mama in paris I love the mama chain. Oh my god, it's so delicious. If you ask me about food, the atmosphere is very hipster. You cannot book a table, so you have to come up when it opens and queue up and usually wait for around an hour. I was in that queue quite a few times. Um, still, I love it. If it's like more fancy atmosphere ones, then it's like Lulu's or Lavenue, but I would swap fancy restaurant for a hipster restaurant like Pink Mama any time of the day. <laughs> Could you do a makeup tutorial or teach me how to put myself together? This is from my manager Marcella. She's like literally a most stunning like woman ever. You cannot even imagine. She wakes up and she's beautiful. Like how crazy. Anyway, makeup tutorial. A lot of you have been asking me to do a makeup tutorial with kind of the makeup that I've been doing lately and I really want to do it but I feel like no one really cares about my makeup tutorials because I'm not a makeup artist or like super specialized in makeup. So I think I'm gonna include it in one of the vlogs that are coming up. How do you manage to get through the day when your IBS is killing you? We need to know. That's a very good question. It depends what kind of stuff I have to do. I'm so used to it now. Well, the one thing you should know about me is that I have a very high pain threshold so I can really put up with a lot of pain without feeling like I need to like lie down or whatever but you know what it is really like limiting it can be very annoying I've been many many times at like work event when I have like really bad IBS I'll never forget once I was at dinner I ended up in hospital that night and it was so bad that I couldn't like even eat or drink or socialize but I was just sitting there throughout the whole dinner and then at the end when everyone was saying goodbyes you know how like when there's like 20-30 people at a work dinner like goodbyes are so slow and I was like I'm in so much pain like I don't have time for the slow goodbyes I've been just sitting at this dinner for three hours throughout the pain and right now I feel like I have a sword in my stomach I cannot move so yeah basically what I did I just kind of disappeared and then my best friend texted me being like what happened and then I went to hospital and she joined me and we sit there sat there for like five hours in the hospital yeah Another time that I had a very bad bout of IBS was in Cannes this summer. I spoke about it a little bit in the video. It was so bad, but I was like out and about, you know. Eventually, I got back to the hotel room. The problem is I also suffer with such a bad like FOMO because I don't want other people missing out because of me. So I don't want to be like, I want to say like, hey, I'll go back to the room and like have a lie down. But then other people might be like, no, let's go out. So I have to say like, hey, I have like a pain in the stomach. And then they don't want to do stuff either. So I always feel guilty that other people are missing out on stuff for me. So I just try to like drink tea or do whatever feels right. Usually I have like a hot thing because that's what my body seeks and that tends to sometimes help, sometimes not. You just have to go with it. I always say this story to myself. This is so like my sister is going to say like I'm so embarrassing. But my great grandfather... <laughs> I mean, it's not funny. My great-grandfather in the World War II was a soldier and a bomb exploded and his stomach opened because of the, like, the detonation, you know? So, like, his stomach opened and his gut opened and he walked for 
I don't know how many kilometers, but many kilometers carrying his intestines. And then he like eventually got to the ambulance where they like sewed him up together and he lived until he was 89. So I always tell myself, if he could do that, you can walk with a bit of stomach pain. Of course, this is not the kind of like rule that I suggest anybody to go by. This is just what I tell myself when I'm feeling like, like something's really hard. I always remind myself of that. But this is not what I suggest to anybody if you have like a pain or something that's undiagnosed make sure to go to your doctor like please this is so important to highlight so important to highlight because the amount of people that don't go to doctors nowadays it's like incredible and also do not google the conditions whatever you google whatever you google a headache or a stomachache whatever you google it's gonna tell you that you have cancer so google is not your good friend for treating the conditions or you know, like figuring out the symptoms or diagnosing yourself. Never Google anything. Do you enjoy reading only motivational books? What about fiction, belle lettres, uh, or classics? Um, well, in Serbia we call it belle lettres so uh, we, I kind of like read that a lot up until I graduated from high school, so up until university. So I read like the novels, like popular novels, up until I was 18 like extremely regularly like all the Sophie Kinsella books all the Harry Potters when I was like 9, 10, 11 like I read all of those books I when I was a very very young like like my first kind of library books at like 8, 9, 10 I read this like kind of series of books called Five Friends I always used to have something that I would be reading it's just that at the moment I'm mainly interested in motivational and um, self-improvement books because I feel like that's if I'm putting my time into something that really motivates me I watched a really interesting documentary about Bill Gates and he reads something like 30 books a week can you deal? It's crazy like um, I don't know I just find that so inspiring I feel, think like your brain develops the more you kind of like discover new things however if I would go on a holiday let's say I go to Maldives with my boyfriend I would like to sit in the shade and just read something funny you know like something like Sophie Kinsella or you know Lindsay Kelk not something kind of self-improvement -y either because after all there's a point where you just have to say like right now I don't want to think about anything, I just want to entertain myself. One book or advice that changed your life, gave you focus and perspective, helps you forget negative stuff. I, I said this before, I always say this, it's a secret. It changed my life, even though I, I didn't buy it to change my life. I bought it to give it as a gift to someone else. And then he kept telling me like, no, you need to read it as well, you need to read it as well. And I was like, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't read it up until I was in a very hard point of my life. So I think like, you cannot just find something and be like this now changed my life i'm so happy everything is great you have to really hit a very hard point of your life where you wake up every morning and life feels difficult and like there's a huge rock on your chest and you just cannot seem to lift it and every day seems all of a sudden so hard and there is no air to breathe that's when you usually find something to grab onto to get up so that's kind of my experience. In the past I've suffered with like anxiety in my very very early 20s and I think like that all like contributed to one point of my life where I felt like wow there's like I this is like the worst now like there's I could describe my life as feeling like at that time being in like a wet dark cave like just felt like so uncomfortable and like there is no I, I don't see the, the way out but at that moment I I found this book and I feel like it really changed my life I know it sounds so stupid like that book changed my life <laughs> I hate when people say that but like that's kind of how I would say it now if I look I would say it to myself like that. Have you seen Joker? I've noticed that everybody's been speaking about the Joker, so I haven't seen it. I probably should see it. Tell me, like, give me some comments about it. How do you manage with fashion life and love life? Okay, um, I never normally speak about this topic and it's something that you guys keep asking me like the amount of questions like tell us about your love life what about a boyfriend how to get over a breakup 
My boyfriend is very jealous of my work. Success versus love life. So many questions that you guys ask me about love life and I never talk about love life. And there is a reason why. I think I briefly touched upon this topic once. There's two things that I would just like to set straight. I'm not gonna speak about love life unless it's really contributing to you, unless it's really helping you. If it's just curiosity, oh, I wonder if Mara has a boyfriend or who's her boyfriend. It's just gossipy and they're like, you know, it's just very not value adding to your life. This channel and the content of this channel is just for the purposes of adding value. So yes, I recommend books, I tell my life experiences that can help you. I show you which products I use, I show you what I buy, do I like it, do I not like it. I show you which restaurants I go to and how I travel and where do I go and I give you tips from that. And then on my blog I write about like outfits or how to get a certain piece or where to buy it or which currency to buy it in and I don't know, like I summarize my outfits and and again, like I put loads of links and gift ideas and wish lists and things like that, just that, you know, are for a young lady that wants to, or a man that wants to shop, that wants to go to nice places, that wants to figure out his life, his career path, uh, how to self-improve, how to become a better person, better business man or a woman, how to, you know, like color their hair, where to get their hair done, things like that. What's new in the world of fashion, travel, beauty. But if it's like, oh, so my boyfriend does this and he bought me this, it's just gossip. And you know what? Like, I am not, like, if you have a look on the shelf of the magazines, there's a Vogue, there is um, Harper's Bazaar, and then there's like a gossip magazine, and I am not a gossip magazine. I want to be like a fashion magazine, I want to be beauty, I want to be a lifestyle, I don't want to be a gossip magazine. So that's the reason why I never speak about my love life, unless I think it has a very good, useful purpose for you guys, then I'm gonna be like, okay, let me tell you this story. I think I'm gonna have to change my battery now, but I'm gonna continue this topic. Wait. Okay, I'm back to continue about a very important topic. So, balancing love life and career um, doesn't have to be a difficult thing. In fact, I don't think it should be called balancing. I think it's perfectly synergic, like it, it should work amazingly well together. I have to say that in the past, for some reason, I always date guys for three years and then I'm like, that's it or that's not it. That's kind of how my kind of dating life, love life has been. And dating guys, like been in relationship, not dating them for three years and then being like, oh, this is not gonna work out. Like being in relationship for three years. And I have to say like all of my boyfriends were extremely supportive, but I have had also different experiences. I have had experiences with people who are not supportive. Like some were more supportive, some were less supportive. Can we say that way? No one was like dragging me down, but there were some that were less supportive than the others. And I think what's extremely important is that you find the right partner in your career that is supportive and who you support and who supports you. So it's always gonna be a two-way road. You cannot just expect to be supported but not give anything. I think you really need to show your partner what you want and if you want the support, you need to offer the support. So I think like I've had really amazing help from my partners in the past who have helped me like build, who have educated me, who've told me like, like one of my partners like told me so much about like websites and how it works and what I should get and helped me get like a new website. One of them like taught me all like was teaching himself photography just so he can take pictures of me after his work. You know like it really 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 helps having someone who's interested. But then I did also have a partner who was like so not bothered if there, if I'm on a cover of a magazine and I'd be like, can you please, like if you're in this country and I'm on this magazine, can you buy it for me? And he'd like forget to buy it. Like, and the magazine would not even be on the shelves anymore and he forgot to buy it. Like, how hard is it? There's like a magazine shop in front of your house. Do you know what I mean? It's so important to kind of understand where you stand and what's important to you. And if career is important to you, you need to find a partner who's going to be very supportive. In my career, I still wouldn't like put my partner a lot on social media because 
I don't think that that's what happens in successful relationships. That's my opinion. That might not be the truth. But I think putting your partner and exposing your partner too much on social media can be negative for a relationship. And like some of the most successful relationships that I look around are where the partner has like going on, something completely different going on in his life and he's not on social media and he's not like part of like the girl's kind of social media journey in terms of like being a plus one for the camera you know like because sometimes I think like if my partner was constantly on the camera with me and I was constantly talking about him I would just feel like he's a prop for prop for like something to say it's like really weird you know I feel like the energies shift and the dynamics in relationship shifts and um, for me that would be strange I'm a after all I'm an Eastern European girl you have to understand that in my opinion there are certain roles and ways that I think I, I think a man should uh, try to be more successful and just always like try to go for more and more than a woman and try and like lift her up and if you are already a successful woman it means that you know and I'm a feminist as well by the way but the reason why I think a man should thrive to be doesn't mean he has to be more successful doesn't mean he has to be earning more money he just have to sh has to show a will and ambition to go for more because he should want to provide the best for the woman regardless the fact that the woman is independent because I have always well not always but after the age of 23 four been always very 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 independent everything that I have done I've done myself what do you do to get over frustration and anger brackets except shopping and fashion just kidding actually shopping and fashion like they don't really help me get over frustration and anger. It's really funny. What helps me get over frustration and anger is gratitude. Just sitting down and saying how grateful I am for certain things in life. But it really has to come from the heart. It has to be very honest and it has to be like I'm so grateful to have my parents in my life I'm so grateful to have nephews who love me so much like every time I tell Stefan I'm sad he comes hugs me gives me kisses and tells me I'm the best tetka in the world like you know really like that just immediately puts so much love in my heart yesterday I had such an angry morning like it happens rarely but it happens and I told my sister at one point, like, oh my god, I'm having such an angry morning. So I went into the shower. It was like 2 p.m. when I realized. I got into the shower, had a hot shower, showered with, like, my best shower gel, moisturized my body. I put on Spotify, I found a playlist called Feel Good Music, Feel Good Playlist. Um, put that on, had a shower, left the shower, and I was like, Do you know what? I'm going to put the candles on. I said my gra graces, like, I was, like, grateful for everything. And immediately I felt a bit better. I feel like shower helps with so many different things. I don't know, this might be kind of weird, but it really is the case for me. How do you break the shyness of trying a style that you're not used to? I think to break shyness in general in life, you just need to keep getting out of your comfort zone, step by step by step by step. And that way you will understand that it's kind of like getting living in a forest whole of your life never been out of the forest and if you, you like find the outer space so overwhelming but if you just go one step at a time figuring out that everything is okay around eventually you will get used to it you know it's just that we're always so comfortable where we are and what we see and we don't know what's out there every year every year i get out of my comfort zone in so many different ways and I'm doing it so much this fall like you will probably find out about it um, at the beginning of the next year or in December but honestly like I'm getting so much out of my comfort zone right now I'm so uncomfortable in so many different ways I'm hoping that it's really going to build me my career myself as a person and that it's going to make me a better person that is going to make me better sister better boss better everything so biggest trends for autumn i'm definitely going to film a video about that how to choose the right university if i knew the answer to this question i would have chosen a university that i actually wanted to practice so i practiced i obviously like studied pharmacy i'm not practicing that it's so hard this thing can be so so dangerous 
it's so hard to choose the right university. I would go back to university now, not so much for like, oh, I have this diploma for like improvement in career, but for the lifestyle, I love the student lifestyle. I love studying, I love going to the library, I love going towards a goal, achieving something, then getting the results, then passing, you know. Do you have an open policy for your closet? Like, can your sister take anything at any time? Anything at any time. Absolutely anything at, like, there is not a single thing in my wardrobe that my sister wouldn't be able to take at any time. Will we ever see your sister totally get the privacy part that I'm so curious? I don't think you will ever see my sister. She is like so loves her privacy. People that are not in this world but are in my life, they love their privacy and they don't want to be on camera. They don't want people to know like, oh, that's, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and I respect that. I think it's so admirable. Sometimes I like, I meet a person and they immediately want to be on camera and I'm like, oh, this is kind of like really also strange because it gives weird vibes, you know? There's a lot of questions that are repeating from what I've already filmed. How do you afford so much designer items? Uh, what jobs did you do before you switched to social media influencer? So I will make sure to link below all the other Q&A videos for you guys to check out. How do you get through days where you feel not motivated or have to get things done? Guys, I have now mastered this. So, I have a new routine. I use the Sleep Cycle app. It's the app that you guys asked me all about. This is not sponsored. I wish it was, but... Uh, and it's an app that wakes me up every morning before 6 o'clock, between 5.30 and 6. Get up every day at 6, and by the time it's 9, I have done all the hardest work of that day. So everything from my to-do list that I really hate doing in the morning, I find it so easy to do. My brain is fresh. My mind is focused. I'm very fast at finishing the tasks efficiently. I'm not tired of making too many decisions, I'm not tired of people, I'm not tired of responses, and I'm not overwhelmed. By the time it's 9, I have already done, like, normally 6 hours of work, that would, like, that would normally take me 6 hours of work, and I feel so productive, I'm so on top of my game, it's now 8 o'clock, and I feel like I've done so great already today because I filmed the video, I've like gotten ready, I packed my suitcase, I'm leaving to London, today I'm going to London with Louis Vuitton for opening of their Bond Street boutique, so it's just amazing. How will you treat yourself when you hit 1 million followers? I think probably with some sort of massive, massive, massive haul or a piece of jewelry and if you want to see that sooner rather than later we're around 200k short of 1 million on instagram if you're not already please go and follow my instagram because i think you will like it i don't know what else to say this is awkward or don't follow it if you don't want to i don't know but it would mean a lot to me if you would so i think i'm gonna finish this video here because also <laughs> london calling leave any questions that you might have in the comment box below and i will try and get to as many of them as i can Thank you for watching. Thank you for all of your support and your love. I uh, love you and I'll leave you. Bye, guys.